Hey friends, welcome back to season number three, episode one of the Finding Joy in Your Home podcast. For those of you who are listening on audio, you're not going to realize that there's any difference going on. But for those of you who are, are on YouTube and you're watching this, hello. Obviously, we've got some big changes to my podcast. We are officially relaunching season number three, which is kind of funny because if you've been following along for years, I actually launched this podcast back in 2014, 2015. We have crossed, I'm pretty sure, 500 episodes. So we've been doing this for a very long time. But a couple of seasons ago, we relaunched and rebranded as the Finding Joy in Your Home podcast. We used to be Homemaking Foundations, but as we kind of brought everything under this one brand, we renamed the podcast and relaunched it at season one. We we reset that clock back down to episode zero. And now in season three of the relaunch, we're doing something brand new. We are launching this podcast on YouTube as well, because there are a lot of people who love watching their podcasts on YouTube. Now, if you listen to this on audio and that's just what you've always done, no problem. You're still going to be able to do that. You're still going to have the audio here that you're going to be able to listen to. That's not going to change for you. But if you are on YouTube, if this is where you like to save things and where you find things, then you're going to be able to watch it here, which is also kind of fun because we have a lot more interviews that are going to be coming. Uh, Our next episode actually is going to be with Melissa K. Norris. We're going to be talking about home uh, food preservation at home. It's a really fun, practical episode, and it's fun because you're going to get to see her and I on camera chatting. So if you do want to watch it on YouTube, that is kind of fun because you get to see us and interact. But like I said, if you're used to watching on audio, then no problem. You're going to be able to enjoy it on audio as well. Okay. So I have got a few announcements for you, and then we're going to jump into today's topic of wasting time as a homemaker, uh, wasting time in general. How can we be, how, how can we use our time better, especially as we're heading into fall, which for me is always a very, very busy season. What are some solutions we can do? about wasting time, of which I am an expert at wasting time, that is. (laughs) All right. So that's the first announcement is that now you can watch here on YouTube. Um, But the, the exciting fun thing is that As of this week, officially, we are relaunching my YouTube channel in a really big way. So I have over 10,000 followers on YouTube. I used to do YouTube here and there years ago, and it has been my sad, neglected channel that I have done nothing with. Well, now we're back and we're really, really excited to jump in. I've been talking to some of my friends who are awesome YouTubers. You guys know Jamarelle Stewart from Large Family Table. She's been encouraging me for a while that I need to restart and get back here on YouTube. I'm finally listening to her. So here I am. And each week we're going to be publishing publishing this video odd cap. <laughs> I can't talk today. We're going to be publishing my video podcast if you want to watch here or keep listening on audio. And the big fun news is that I have a new weekly show starting on YouTube called Baking School with Jamie. It's going to be so much fun. If you guys are on YouTube, you'll see that I already published a trailer that you can see. And the first episode is launching Thursday, August 8th. So you're going to want to watch that show. Uh, It's going to be super fun, 10 to 15 minutes a week where we actually give you some great teaching time. And then we're actually going to cook a recipe together. So every single week, you are going to get to cook something and learn to bake with me because I'm convinced that the very best way to learn to bake is by trying out just one new recipe a week. It, it Give it time, give it some weeks that blend into months to blend into years. And suddenly you know how to bake, which is my story. I didn't know how to bake. I didn't even know how to cook at all. <laughs> one new recipe a week. And we're going to do that together. You can find out all the details by going to bakingschoolwithjamie.com. That's baking school with Jamie, J-A-M-I. My name is spelled weird, dot uh, com. You can find the link to hop over to YouTube if you're not already there. And then you can also sign up to get printables and recipes every single week. I'm going to give you the full recipes as we bake through them. It's going to be awesome. So those are my fun, big announcements. And then we've got some other really fun shows that will be coming to YouTube. We're going to be doing day in the life videos, homeschooling routines, uh, work-life balance, all kinds of fun stuff, cooking, all kinds of cooking and baking and all the homemaking things. All right, so let's get today to today's episode. We've got some great things to chat about with wasting time and what we can do about that. It can so often feel like we are spinning our wheels when it comes to getting things done, especially within our home. And I think a large part of that is that our lives at home are very cyclical. 
every month is bringing more or less the same sorts of things every week, day in and day out. You know, we scramble to get better cleaning routines in our house and we're, we're scrambling around trying to figure out how to do laundry better and get dishes done. And we take a whole day and we clean everything and we do four loads of laundry and put it away and we do the dishes. And then we wake up the next morning and guess what? There's more laundry to do. There's dishes in the sink and it can feel like, ah, you know, how, how do I get more stuff done? And often it can just feel like, we're spinning our wheels. At least, you know, this is for me. And everything I'm talking about today is stuff that I have struggled with and battled through and things that I am always learning. And so for those of you guys who are brand new, if you're not familiar with our family, Jason and I real fast, Jason and I have been married for 14 years. We have seven children, ages 10 down to Ricky will be one on August 12th. He's almost one years old. Uh, We have two sets of twin boys back to back, our first ones. So we had four boys in the span of two years. It was crazy. Um, And we have six boys and one girl and we homeschool and Jason and I run our business full time from home. We have a lot going on on a daily basis. And so these are lessons that I have had to fight tooth and nail for in my own life, trying to figure out how do I be productive? How do I get things done while also pouring into the relationships in my life. And I don't want a perfectly clean home at the sake of never spending time with my kids. Like, how do we balance all of these millions of things that we're supposed to do. And I have felt at many points in my motherhood motherhood and adult journey that I have at times been busy, 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 like go, go, go without actually getting much done. You know what I mean? Where you just feel like you're constantly exhausted. You're constantly tired. And yet also like nothing's ever getting done. Like you're not moving the needle on the important things. And so how can how how is it that we can feel pulled in so many different directions, but we're not actually making traction in those few areas that really matter? So as we kick off season three, I think this is a really important place to start. And like I said, next episode will be an interview with Melissa K. Norris, which is going to be really fun. And then the episode after that, I'm going to be talking about planning and how can we very intentionally plan and put these big priorities on our schedule. That's going to be another really practical one. So look forward to episode three of season three, where we get into that. And it'll really piggyback off of what we're talking about today. Today is a very good like evaluation day to figure out what am I wasting time on? What do I need to work on? And then in episode three, we're going to talk about now that we've got those, how do we actually make a realistic schedule? How do we put those big important things on the schedule, which can be really hard. Now, I don't know about you guys, but fall always feels like a really, really busy time. And I think that's normal. But I kind of forget it every year and we get into August and I start going, oh, my goodness, like (laughs) the things there's there's so much stuff. Uh, You know, you've got school kicking off again, uh, which comes with co-op opportunities and sports and activities. Bible studies start up again. We've got the looming holidays and it feels like after summer of so many things being off and different schedules, it's like time to do things again, which is fun in one respect and hard in others because there's so much to do. And I'm already, I don't know about you guys, but I start planning for Christmas in July. So June, July hits and I start thinking of Christmas lists. I've already started my Christmas shopping. I feel like I have to, as with seven kids, our budget is just, it's tight enough that (laughs) I have to plan earlier. And so I'm already and I want to find sales and I want to I don't want to wait till December 19th and feel like I have to go buy everything, which is stressful and way too expensive. So I've already got my first Christmas gifts done. I'm working on um, sewing some Christmas gifts like I I feel pretty good that I'm on it. But I also know that June and July, I tend to be on it more and, (laughs) and then fall happens and everything goes crazy. And so I just know for me, I feel like Christmas is already almost here. It will be here before we know it. And I also want to be very intentional with holiday times with my family and making good traditions and baking food. But all of that takes planning and it takes time. And some of you are like, wait, Jamie, no, don't start talking about Christmas yet. Sorry if I'm stressing you out. It's how my brain works. You don't have to think about Christmas yet if you don't want to. Don't worry. (laughs) I'm not going to force you to. But that's what goes on in my brain is I feel like, whoa, I'm going to blink and it's going to be January and we're going to be into next year, kicking off the new year, like before I know it. So as I stare fall right in the face, as we're plowing into it, I want to get new routines and schedules together. We're thinking through what is it going to look like this year? And I think a really important topic to talk about is how can we stop wasting time? How can we be more productive and also 
It's not just about output, but how can we use that time that we are given? How can we use that time better before the Lord? And I think it's really, really important. Every new season, every three or four months, whether that follows, you know, summer, spring, fall, whatever, or just every couple of months, I find that I really need to reevaluate what's working well and what isn't working well, especially as a homeschool family. I feel like the kids ages, they're changing every couple of months on what's needed. We need new routines. We need new worksheets, kind of, you know, evaluating what we need. And right now I have a under one-year-old in the house every three months, he is changing drastically. And so I am really needing to figure out, okay, what do I do with the baby now? Um, when we're trying to get school done, he's now more mobile. Do I need to get some more toys out? And that plays out in a hundred different ways within the home. How do we need to, every couple of months, how do we need to reevaluate what's working well, what isn't? And a big thing for me that I have to go back to again and again with so many modern distractions is making sure that I'm using my time well and not wasting my days away, which unfortunately is way too easy to do. And I do have to every couple of months make sure that I'm evaluating because seasons do change, things change, schedules change, and making sure that I'm being really, really wise with my time is a hard thing to do. So I have got five things that I want to chat about. Some of these things might not apply to you and some of them you're gonna go oof, That's what I needed to hear because this is the stuff that I'm telling myself as I get ready for fall. All right, so number one, number one, do you need to be getting up earlier and or do you need to use your evenings better? Okay, let's talk about this. One thing that I struggle with is I am very good at getting stuff done at night. I'm a natural night owl. I have been since I was a kid. I'm just, I'm a night owl. I can stay up. People who are like, I can't function after 8 p.m., I don't understand that because I'm an absolute night out. Like I would be happy to stay up till two or three. And then, I mean, I don't, but I would be happy to. That's what I did as a teenager. And then sleep in in the morning. Like my brain just works really well. But I I struggle then in establishing better morning routines. And some of you definitely don't struggle with that. And I think that's awesome. We're going to talk about that in a second. But a particular struggle for me is realizing that that's not an excuse. So I'm not a natural morning owl um, or a morning, a morning bird. (laughs) Did I just mix those up? And so I struggle. uh, I've always struggled with breakfast. So like when my kids were really, really little, when I had the first, um, you know, the first four, two years apart in age, I really deeply struggled with breakfast time because I wasn't awake yet. And I was in such an exhausting period of time that in that time period, What benefited me really well was was pre-planning out breakfast, getting all my breakfast pre-planned, even if it was simple, just like crock pot oatmeal. I could do that at night when I was more awake, um, pre-making things so that I had stuff in the fridge I could just pull out and we had great breakfast ready to go. I could just turn the coffee pot on. And that really got me through my mornings for a lot of years, a a really simple thing. But it, it took me a while to kind of organize myself to realize that. And that made a really big impact. And so now as we have seven children, five of which are in school now, which just feels a little cray cray sometimes with five kids in school, fifth grade down to second grade. I feel like in this last year, our school went from like, oh, it's little and it's we're learning to read to all of a sudden, like big kid school. You know what I mean? Like we're starting on that precipice of my older boys are going to be in middle school soon. And there's just we're starting to think middle school is this great transition as you're getting ready for high school. Like I'm already planning out their next six years. Right. And so there's so much that I feel like we've gotten to this next step in seriousness with school, which is also actually exciting. I think it's fun. There's more cool things we can do, but I have to make sure even more with five in school now that I'm being really, really good with our time for school. And guess what? That all ends up on me. That and kids can have bad attitudes and they can derail things for sure. But if I am not running our morning well, then we're not getting things done. Everybody's in a grumpy mood. It doesn't work as well. So for me, if I'm up well before the kids are up um, and now that my boys are older, like uh, a lot of times by the time I put her around to their room, they're already awake and listening to an audiobook because they can read or listen to an audiobook if they wake up early. Um, they can do, you know, they're they're old enough now that, you know, they're not toddlers that I have to do everything for that. They'll be doing that. And that's fine. But if I'm up, especially before the little two, we have a three year old and almost one year old. If I'm up before them, if I've got coffee made, I've got breakfast going, and then we can really start school right at 8 a.m., it changes everything. It's this trickle-down effect for the rest of our day that makes such a big impact. And 
I still struggle because it's not my natural favorite thing. I hate getting up early. And then yet once I do, I'm really happy. And I'm like, why don't I do this every day? And then I struggle and we get into bad habits of staying up too late. So that is our like going to bed on time and then disciplining to get up early is my current struggle that I'm really working on. And I've had some really great successes this year. And I've also had a baby this year. And so I've had times where he first started sleeping through the night and I was getting up consistently and it was awesome. And then he got a cold and started waking up and then I wasn't. So again, Every couple of months, this is something great to reevaluate. And once again, we're at that place where I'm like, yep, this is the time we're redoing our schedules. We're, you know, and we're starting school again. We're getting into this and we actually school year round, but we did actually take pretty much the entire month of July off of school this year because of all of our work projects. So we are we are going on a road trip this week. And when we get home, we are restarting all of our schedules and routines are restarting. Okay, so I have also from talking to so many women, I have also found the opposite to also be true. So like I was saying, some of you listening cannot identify with me at all. You're like, my eyes fly open at 530. I couldn't sleep in. You're crazy. And I am in some ways very jealous of you. Um, So good job. That's awesome. Or you've just fought really hard to have good morning routines. I am so proud of you because it's not that easy. You're awesome. But often the person who, who the person who's very, very good at getting up early really struggles as they head into dinner time and the evening. So maybe you need to focus on more intentional ways to use your time as the evening hits. So we're not all going to be able to be productive all of the time. And so my pr- productivity kicks into high gear in the evening. I get the kids down and I'm like, what projects can I work on? Uh, which does bite me sometimes because then I'm not getting to bed early enough. So there's balance everywhere. But if you're struggling, you're getting up early in the morning, what are some things you need to do? Do you need to be eating a better lunch? Do you need to be um, taking some good supplements in the afternoon to kind of help stabilize out your energy levels? And you don't have to be working on projects till 10 p.m., but if you're struggling, maybe to get through dinner and you're not kind of wrapping up the house in a good evening routine, but you would like to, there are some ways that we can look at where is it that you're struggling? What point of day are you struggling? Uh, Whereas when I can get my morning routine down, the rest of my day goes better usually. So where is it that you need to work on with your time? And I would encourage you take an honest assessment of your day. What is it that you need to focus on when it comes to wasting time? And like I said, for us, we thrive better getting up and getting going. And it's just kind of a trickle down effect then. Okay, number two is get dressed for the day. Get dressed for the day. Some of you who work outside the home are like, yeah, okay. I do. (laughs) Uh, But this is huge for those of us who are home all day. And as a younger stay-at-home mom, I was in my PJs most of the time. Like I just was like in survival mode trying to, you know, keep everybody alive. And it was just more comfortable to stay comfy and in my PJs. But I have realized over the year that it really does greatly hamper my productivity. Or maybe on the flip side, when I get up and get dressed, I'm just that much more productive. So when I can get up and get dressed by 8 a.m., which sometimes the way our homeschool morning goes, we start off with read alouds and we'll cuddle up on the couch and read. So sometimes I'm not getting dressed actually till 10 or 11. When I we kind of do a quick pause, the kids are reading, I'll get dressed then. That happens sometimes. And that's that works really well too. But when I get up, my day starts, I start reading. I, I mean, I start by getting dressed. It is a terrific signal to my brain that it's time to get busy. It's time to be productive. Like we're moving into productivity and I take my day very seriously at home. So eight to five at home with my kids is my job. And I want to take it seriously by getting dressed, by showing up for the day as I would with a job outside the home. And maybe that sounds silly, but it also is, it's just absolutely the signal in my brain that it's time for the day. It's time to be productive. It's time to, um, it's not time to sit around on the couch and waste time. And I'm not just sitting on the couch and picking up my phone and scrolling through Instagram. We have way too much stuff to get done throughout the day. And so getting dressed is this fantastic signal. And um, I've been doing this now consistently for a couple of years. And it sounds like the silliest little thing. And yet it makes a huge, huge difference. And then often around five or six, I will then transition into my pajamas again, or I will put on like workout clothes. And that's kind of another signal that the day is winding down. And it just, yeah, it just, it makes a big difference. Okay. All right. Number three, how are you filling up 
your own cup. Now, as Christians, we tend to gloss over this. We don't want to be like, oh, we're selfish and thinking about ourselves. And, you know, we're not supposed to, um, you know, be talking about how how do we fill up our own cups? Like, we're not supposed to because Jesus does that. And I understand those arguments, right? I understand that we're not supposed to just be like self-care, self-care, go out on shopping sprees and you must get your nails done every week in order to, I don't know, like you deserve it all. Totally fine if you get your nails done. I actually really love getting my nails done. Clearly not right now. Um, <laughs> but we we have to walk in this middle because there's absolutely the self-indulgence of the world where we could be so selfish and so self-centered and focus on all the wrong things. And then the other ditch, ditch is that we try to put on this like false humility and self-denial to where we deny ourselves so much that we're not taking care of our own health. And when we are serving the Lord, we need health. We need vitality. We need to be able to be, we need to be eating our vegetables and having whole grain carbs so that we have energy for the day. And it's like, we tend to just fall into one of the two ditches. And as Christians, we tend to fall over here where we're like, no, we can never talk about like investing in ourselves. Well, I think we can, if we're doing it in the right way, are you meeting with the Lord? Are you making time uh, to be in God's word and to pray that is investing in yourself? A, a huge, absolute big component of it. Are you eating lunch? Are you eating lunch or are you just surviving off of coffee all morning? I have done that. And to the detriment of my health, <laughs> are you looking for how maybe your hormones, maybe you've had three babies and your hormones are insane. Figure your hormones out. Do things to take care of yourself because it's an investment in your own family. And so how are you filling up your own cup throughout the day? Because look, life is not about just being ultra productive all the time. We're not supposed to be robotic machines who work, work, work. And the goal of this podcast today is not to encourage each of us to just run ourselves into the ground, doing all the things all the time for everybody. We probably all have areas where we're lazy and that we need to work at. I absolutely do. But we also need to make sure that we're caring for our own souls and for our health. And that's actually really, really important. And when I thrive as a mom, when I thrive as a stay-at-home mom who's in her house, all the time. <laughs> uh, homeschooling family, like we're all here a lot. Um, th I thrive when I am making sure that I'm taking care of myself. Uh, my hormones went psycho after having five babies in four years. I had major work to do. My thyroid was terrible, but I put in a lot of work. And I still at times after having baby number seven, my health kind of went backwards for a few months. And I've really had to work this year on figuring out what is wrong now this time? How do I need to nourish my body? And a lot of times it means slowing down long enough to nourish my body. So part of being productive is not just jamming in every single thing we can of every second of every day. It's nurturing and nourishing the important things in life, which sometimes means slowing down, saying no to things so you can read a book on the couch with your kid. And it also means slowing down so that you're eating well-rounded meals. So you're nourishing your body so that you are taking the time for exercise. I struggle with that hugely. I hate exercise, <laughs> but I also know that as a mom, as someone who wants to have vitality for the years ahead to run around with my kids and Lord willing one day grandkids, I need to prioritize my own health. And it's something that we miss. And that as moms, we just don't talk about enough, but it doesn't have to be to the exclusion of our kids. No, but we do it for our kids, for our family, so that we have that strength and that vitality to serve the Lord and what he's calling he's asking for us. So I know when I had the first, the, the twins back to back, um, and then my daughter was born 18 months later. So we had two four-year-olds who just had turned four, three weeks before she was born. So like, there's a big difference between a new four-year-old and like an almost five-year-old. So they were barely four. The second set of twins were two and Magnolia was born, newborn. And I had so much wasted time, wasted time. I had so much downtime. I wasn't, that was not a season of productivity for me, nor should it have been. I was, I mean, it was, I was keeping everybody alive, but I wasn't like cooking all these things and doing all these things. Absolutely not. But I struggled even after she got, I remember she weaned and I was like, wait a minute, my health is getting worse. Why am I feeling worse and worse? Like I should be feeling better now. And she was getting older and then she was sleeping through the night and everybody was sleeping through the night and I was feeling worse and worse. And so I hit a point where like, I didn't have the energy. It was not about tricking my brain and like just getting up a little earlier. 
I was in a very bad place with my health health. And so I couldn't do more or I would go even farther backwards. And so often we have to look at that and realize it too. Is there some help that we need to get? Is there, um, especially with depression, I had postpartum depression after my first three births and, um, really did not recognize it until the third birth. And even then I didn't fully recognize it until I was out of it. You know, you look back in hindsight and go, Oh, there was some of that going on. (laughs) Uh, but the first one, the first ones, especially I had some pretty deep postpartum depression. Um, and postpartum, like, yeah, all of that. And so, Sometimes we need to evaluate as well and say, is this a season where I need to really step back from certain things and focus on my health? And that is not a selfish thing. That's not an ungodly thing. In fact, I think as Christian wives and moms, we need to be talking about this more, especially when you have babies and you have babies back to back. It takes so much from your body. It takes so much from your body. And as a Western culture, our food is depleted. We're not eating the supplements and the minerals that our ancestors did. Uh, We need to work on that. And I'm going to get off my soapbox on that because we can talk about that a whole whole lot on another day. All right. Number four, where are your rest times? So let's talk about this. A huge key to being productive in the hours that you're supposed to be productive is building real rest time into your day. You're not supposed to run yourself into the ground doing things every second of the day. Now, sometimes it does feel like that. We wake up till when we go to bed, we're just tired, uh, especially in the younger years. Um, it's just, there are days that are just purely exhausting. Um, But something that Jason and I are very, very, very intentional to do with our very busy schedule, especially because we do run an online business from home, that business could creep into every single second of every day. (laughs) So we put some pretty hard stops and um, we rest. We end every evening resting, which for Jason and I always means ending the night with reading. That's what we both really, really enjoy. People ask how we find the time to read. And it's just that's what we do for fun. I mean, we don't really watch TV uh, much at all anymore. I don't know. We watch like we do like family movies with like the kids, but him and I don't really watch TV, just personal preference. We really like to read and we both know that that's very energizing for us. We're both introverts, classic introverts, uh, and that works really well for us. So ending our night reading is like absolutely must have. We have hard stops on work. We have hard stops on work projects. We're both night owls. So we could stay up even later. So we we, we have to put hard stops on that. Um, and then Sundays we block out for our entire day of rest, which has become really, really sweet and important in our schedule, especially the older our kids get, the more that there's just a lot going on with our weeks, right? And uh, Saturdays are busy. Our weeks are busy. And so having that Sunday for rest, for being as with as a family, for having downtime, uh, it it's definitely has taken some getting into that habit of doing that. But now we look forward to that day of rest and reset before jumping into our Mondays so much. And the way that we personally do it in our household is we do Sabbath rest from Saturday at sundown to Sunday at sundown. And that's because we do on Saturday nights, we do family board game night. Like that's our big thing that we do. We do homemade pizza and board games on Saturday nights. And so that usually happens right around six. Uh, we're starting it. Well, we usually, it starts at four, but I'm not usually jumping in till six cause I'm making pizza. And then, so we, we do that right around six and then like that ushers in Saturday night then is rest. Like we're taking off. Jason and I are usually spending the rest of our night reading after we're doing board games and stuff with the kids. And then we do that through Sunday night at sundown. And what that allows me is it gives me that sun, that block on Sunday night to be like, okay, what's my meal plan for the week? Do I need to schedule a grocery pickup for tomorrow? Uh, what's on our schedule? Do I have everything ready for homeschool tomorrow morning? So I'm not getting up on Monday morning and going, wait a minute, what do I need to do? That gives me a little bit of time to kind of reset. I can get the kitchen reset. And yet it's not bleeding into my Sunday of rest because otherwise that could be like, oh, well, I'm just going to start it at two. Oh, I'm going to start it when we get home from church. So this allows to really have that Sunday of rest and then kind of get back into it. And I don't think this needs to be legalistic. I don't think this needs to be dogmatic. But I also think that God gave us this pattern of rest and that we would be very, we're, we're foolish when we don't accept that gift of rest and trust him that he's given us the right amount of time to get done what we need to in this lifetime. And yet we don't trust and we try to just fit everything into all the margins. And like I said, this has definitely taken um, getting into really good habits of cleaning routines and food routines so that I'm not spending Sundays cooking. And um, it's taken a while to get there. And yet we really, really cherish our Sundays now because of that. 
Okay, number five is to limit social media. All right, we're going to move through this fast because we have already been on here for a while. <laughs> okay, so limit social media. So social media has become a huge problem for so many people. And if you find yourself constantly reaching for your phone every single time you get bored and pay attention because it's probably a lot more often than you think, then you might want to take a social media break or set up some better limits. And this is something I think so, so, so many of us struggle with deeply. And I found this to be true because we have a lot of transition moments in our household during our homeschool days. So we'll have like, we're, we've got breakfast and then we're kind of cleaning up breakfast. And then I need to get our morning sheets out in our handwriting. And then after that, I need to clean them up and get the next thing out. Like there's just all these little micro transitions. And when I'm really intentional and I'm on it, we just flow through those. Like we're putting it away and the next one's coming out and you know, we're just, we're moving and grooving. And yet when the phone, when the phone is sitting here, oh, actually, Jason texted me. <laughs> um, when your phone is sitting here, then you're just, you, you pick it up and you are like, oh, I'll just check this one notification. And then 15 minutes later, you're still scrolling on Instagram or longer than, you know, if we really added up how much time we were wasting on social media, a lot of us would probably cry. And so I think it's worth really looking through or looking at deeply, how are we wasting time in this way? And look, I am not a social media hater. I'm actually not. I don't think that everybody needs to run out right now and delete everything off of your phones. Maybe you do. Maybe you do. Maybe that is something you need to do right now. But I do think that there are some very good and valuable things that can come from social media. I'm going to say it. And I have formed deep relationships with women online who have turned into real life friendships. I love sending natural videos and tips back and forth between my sister-in-law and I on Instagram. Every time she sends me something, I'm like, oh, it's going to be good. What did she send me? Um, I've gained countless valuable tips on homemaking, cooking, homeschooling, and so much more from social media, especially because we are not connected anymore between the generations. There's so many skills and things that I feel like I'm recovering that people kind of scoff at being, um, you know, grandma hobbies. And, um, I don't have, my mother passed away. My, um, my, uh, fr uh, paternal grandmother has passed away and my maternal grandmother has, um, really, really, really bad, um, uh, memory loss. She has like Alzheimer's. And so I don't have women in my direct line who are teaching me these skills. Um, and in fact, my mother didn't know a lot of these skills. These are a lot of things that people do joke like, oh, you've got like grandma skills, but learning how to take stains out of clothing, learning how to mend things, uh, learning how to just really care for homes is, are all really important things that we should be learning from other women. And social media can play actually a really important role in that as long as we're taking those skills to our real life. And what I hope is to take those skills. I'm generation zero now trying to recover and learn so many of these things. And I want to then pass those on to my daughter and to be able to be that grandmother who can pass on those skills so we can take things from social media and use them for good in our real life. We can, we absolutely can. But, and so I, with that, I can say that social media has enriched my life in many ways. There's been goods, but it, there's been good. But I also have to be careful that I'm the one who's intentionally using social media instead of just being like run over by it. And it's a really fine line. It's a really fine line. And so this has been a particular struggle for me as I run an online business. So I need to use social media. I do think going through 2020, 2021, if I didn't run an online business, I would have deleted Instagram and Facebook. And I would have been like, bye, <laughs> like I'm out. I'm not here for all this. Like hate and craziness. And, um, and yet I need to be on social media daily because it is a really important part of our online business. So I have had to really figure out how do I use this tool? That's actually really incredible. It's how we're probably talking right now. You probably saw, you know, found me on Instagram or whatnot. Um, the internet can be really great. So how do I use this in a way that I'm setting up limits for myself? So what do you need to do? What do you need to do in your life to set up limits? Or maybe you are in a season. I have a friend who just completely deleted Facebook and Instagram and she's like, I don't need it. It was, it was, it was more of a hindrance to her than it was a help. And so she deleted it all and she's been off of it for like three years and she's totally happy. She doesn't miss it and she's good. So set up whatever those guidelines need to be for you. So for me, what we finally did this year is I was realizing it was too hard having it on my phone because I keep my phone with me all day long. Jason and I do run our online business together and he's frequently texting me throughout the day and saying, hey, um, 
so-and-so sent me this email. What time do you want to schedule an interview? Or, you know, he just needs to pass things through, or we just actually just, honestly, we text a lot (laughs) throughout the day. And so I need my phone near me for that. And so it's not as simple as like turning my phone on airplane mode and like putting it in the room and pulling it back out. But I, I was starting to feel like my brain was very fractured and we'll talk about that next. And so what we ended up doing is I got an iPad mini. We actually had an, uh, we had an Apple gift card first, like selling some, an old phone back or something. And I got an iPad mini and I put a hundred percent of my social media and my work on it. My phone now, my personal phone has not a single thing that is work related. I have no email except for my personal email. Nope. I don't even have my personal email on here. I have no email on here. I have no social media. I have, um, my audiobooks. I have Kindle. I have Voxer, which is how I Vox my sisters and friends. Um, I've got my text messaging and felt like it's a dumb phone basically now. Um, but I still have GPS, which I still really wanted, <laughs> especially having moved to a new state this last year. I need GPS. Um, but uh, all of my work then is on the iPad mini and that has worked really well, because then when I'm on, and in fact, actually, I haven't been on social media enough lately. I'm I'm trying to get back into the routine in a good way for our business, but it has given me that separation. So what are the things that you need to do to kind of set up some, some limits you can delete? I know I have friends who will just delete Instagram completely off their phone. And then in the evening when they want to like spend a half an hour as their downtime, cause they enjoy that they'll load it back on. Um, you can do, you can set up like limits for yourself or social media, but really be honest with yourself. How are you wasting time? How are you wasting time? And is social media a really big part of that? And you need to set up some guidelines. Okay. Number six, the last thing I'm going to talk about is work on stretching your attention span. Okay. With modern technology, our brains are split and are so fractured. So we've got, you know, YouTube shorts. Now we have Instagram reels. Um, we consume content at an unprecedented rate now. So instead of listening to a whole hour long podcast, so good job for you listening. If you got to this point, (laughs) you know, we swipe through Instagram, uh, stories and reels after a second and a half because it's not keeping our attention and we're just like on to the next thing. And it has to be like, you know, so fast and we lose focus. We lose attention for longer form content. We lose focus for books. And so Jason and I both this year have realized how impatient our brains can get when things take a little bit longer. So while I actually do enjoy reels and they can be really fun, they can even be good sources of education. We both have been intentionally greatly limiting that shorter content because that's where it can get really addictive. Um, I'm not on TikTok, but it's like the same thing. Um, you know, the TikToks and the reels, it can just be so like we're swiping and swiping and so, and you're just passively it, it consuming, but it never ends. Do you guys remember back in the day of Instagram where you would like get to the end of your feed and there was no more new posts and you were like, oh, okay, I guess I'll have to check in later because there's nothing new to look at. That's no longer the case. You could spend five consecutive hours on Instagram and never run out of new content. Same with YouTube, same with, you know, whatever. And so, um, we're just working on realizing that that is a problem for modern people and also wanting to set a better example and realize that this is going to be an issue for our children's generations. They're not on social media. They're not, you know, they don't use the internet and all that stuff yet, but it's going to be a particular problem for their generations as well that we want to be aware of. And we want to work on Now we want to, we want to have longer attention spans, not shorter. I want to have the focus to watch a cooking video or listen to a long podcast or read a book, but it can be hard to retrain our brains to focus and not skim read everything because they're so used to just skimming articles and skimming through something that it can be actually hard when you sit down with a physical book to have that attention span. And so this, you know, this greatly applies to having the ability to um, also like slow down and focus when your eight year old comes up to you and wants to tell you about his latest Minecraft build. And he's just going and, it, you know, can take I have one of those. It's like, are you starting this sentence? Like, oh, OK, like, you know, and um, I want to slow down. I want to look him in the eyes. I want to actually listen to what he's saying. I want to respond. I want to ask questions and be engaged with who he is because, yeah, Minecraft doesn't matter. And yet it matters to him at this age. And because that eight year old is going to one day be a 16 year old before you know it. And if he learns that mom doesn't listen to his ramblings or you are not truly engaged, that 16 year old's not going to come to you with his ramblings or his thoughts either. And I think we just we're so fractured and I'm busy. I got a lot of things going on. I got a lot of things to juggle that it can feel very hard for me sometimes to stop and listen and look. I have to literally make myself stop and listen and look to who's talking to me and like 
actually be engaged and listen to what they're saying and not just looking at them, but my mind's in a million different ways. And this, I think, also applies to our husbands. Are you really listening to your husband? Are you slowing down to look in his eyes, ask how his day is, actually pay attention long enough to really hear him and ask thoughtful things? And I realize I expect that from him. I expect him to listen to how my day was. I expect him to listen when I share uh, this thing on Instagram that I found. And yet it applies both ways. And I realized this the other day, Jason, I'm not on Twitter and Jason has lots of like Twitter feeds he follows. And he was telling me about some like controversy that happened in his like circles. And, um, I was sitting there and I was realizing like my attention was super slipping. I was starting to look at my phone cause I was like, where, okay, what is the story? But it was something that was important to him. And actually it wasn't like the most boring thing ever. It just, I felt like I have other things to do. I want to get back to my book. And I realized like, that's not fair. I need to give him my attention. He's trying to tell me something that's in his life. That's his world. And we can do that so often to everybody in our life because I'm like, I don't care about this thing right now, you know, but we need to be better. We need to be better listeners. We need to be more engaged. And I think with the people in our households, we can sometimes be lulled into a false sense of security that we're with them all day long. And yet, are you actively personally engaged with them? And that's something that I really try to work on because there are eight other people living in this house with me. That's a lot of people to try to keep up on (laughs) and to actually talk with. And not everybody do I have deep conversations with every day, but I'm trying to be better at those who seek me out. And there's a few that are more talkative than others that I'm actually really listening. And that I'm also seeking out these individuals because I have one or two who are also more quiet and are not the ones clamoring for attention. I need to make sure that I'm going to them and recognizing that and me being the one to reach out to them. And it's easy, especially for those quiet ones to kind of slip under the radar. And I really don't want that to happen. And getting to a place of not having our brains quite as fractured, I think, uh, really help quite a lot. All right. So that's what I have for you today. I know these tips were like kind of all over the place, but it's what I sat down and was really thinking about. What do I struggle with? What do I need to work on? Uh, Episode three, when we get to it, will be a bit more step by step. We're going to be talking about the different steps you can walk through um, to get to that point of getting things planned, getting better schedules. So you're kind of thinking, okay, maybe I know where I'm where I am uh, wasting time, but how does that actually translate to a better schedule? We're going to talk about that in episode three. In fact, I think I'm going to have a guest who's going to be popping in with some of her own good things to say on that episode, which will be really fun. All right. Well, ladies, thank you so much for tuning in here with me today. If you haven't done already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, You can like this video, you can subscribe and Honestly, as I relaunch this YouTube channel, one of the really big things that actually does help is liking videos and commenting. And people don't comment very often anymore. It's not as much of a thing. People are busy. We're fractured. We're not paying attention. But especially as we try to get things relaunched, if you have a second, would you leave a comment down below? It actually really helps. Plus, I also really love the feedback. Please share, like, if you have tips from this uh, that I'm talking about today, if there's things that you've realized uh, that are helpful to you, anything like that, or if you have questions about how we run our schedules, anything like that, those, that feedback's fantastic because it helps me plan for future episodes. And it also really helps with the YouTube algorithm, which because we haven't been on YouTube, we're probably at like a total zero in the algorithm. It's probably showing our videos to nobody. (laughs) So if you get a chance, that would be awesome. And then do make sure you subscribe. We do have our brand new baking school with Jamie. That's going to be launching on Thursday, August 8th. We will have a brand new episode coming out every Thursday. This podcast will now be coming out every Tuesday. So you can look forward to those two pieces of content every single week. And then we have other shows that are going to be coming, uh, probably more random episodes and stuff that will be coming to the YouTube channel as well. So thank you guys so much for tuning in today and we'll see you guys back here next week for the next episode.